Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to Alberta, Canada, near the town of Elkton. The town is so small it doesn't appear on the list of population centers for the province. It's surrounded by cattle ranches and sprawling farms. This cow town sits at an elevation of 3,670 feet and is in the foothills of the Canadian Rockies. The Little Red Deer River flows right through town and along its willow-covered banks, moose, elk, and mule deer frolic. Around town are hills that are packed with pine, fir, and spruce trees in which the wildlife abound. Predators in this area are plenty, with black bears, cougars, coyotes, and wolves prowling the shadows. But the latest surge in grizzly bear attacks are on the minds of the local residents. Fall is a pivotal time for bears, in general, but particularly for grizzly bears. They're in a state called hyperphagia, which dramatically increases their drive to eat. They must put on enough calories to fatten up for hibernation in the coming winter, and this search for food will frequently take them into territories they wouldn't normally be found. In this frenetic state, bears move much more than they typically do, and are known to take risks that they normally wouldn't take to find calories. Any variance in availability of food sources may put bears in dire circumstances, and the past few years have yielded poor production in wild buffalo berry crops. In a dangerous mixture of timelines, fall is also the time of year in which hunters venture into the woods to harvest game. Earlier in the fall, in most areas, archery hunters are the first to head into the forest and mountains. They are particularly vulnerable compared to rifle hunters because a bow is not as accurate and is only lethal at close distances. That means by the time a bow hunter decides they have to defend themselves, the weapons they may use to do so aren't the best at getting the job done. Robert Wagner was a 48-year-old meat cutter at the Didsbury AG Foods in Didsbury, a town just 15 miles or so to the east of Elkton. He's known in the town to be a generous and gregarious man who gives away game meat from animals he harvests as an avid bow hunter. Robert enjoyed hunting elk and deer, but moose were one of Robert's favorite game animals to pursue with his bow. Each year he would grab his bow and archery gear and make his way to the willow-lined creek bottoms around the Little Red Deer River to hunt for moose. He was a pretty good bow hunter too, and frequently bagged one of the giant ungulates, filling his freezer and allowing him to give meat to friends who enjoyed eating it. Having scheduled his time off at his job, Robert enthusiastically told his co-workers of his hunting plans in the coming fall. He'd spent time in the preseason scouting the animals in his hunting zone and knew where they tended to be. As his scheduled vacation approached, Robert packed his gear and bid farewell to his friends, family, and co-workers before setting off for his hunting trip the last week of September 2008. Robert had scheduled several days off of work, but by the end of his vacation hadn't returned to his job on time on September 29th. His family had initially hoped that he would show up a few days later than normal, having had to spend extra time packing his moose out. As this time frame lagged, their concerns grew, and they decided to reach out to local authorities to file a missing persons report on Robert. Based on the information gleaned from family and friends, authorities determined roughly where to begin their search for Robert. It wasn't long before searchers found Robert's pickup truck parked along a remote stretch of highway, but couldn't find any clues as to his location. A search party was organized, and a systematic canvassing of the area ensued. Approximately one kilometer from Robert's truck, searchers located his corpse on Wednesday, October 1st. The scene surrounding his corpse was a grim one, with blood spattering the bushes and ground. The evidence at the location told the horrible tale, but the scientific analysis would be concluded by investigators. Now certain they had a killer grizzly on their hands, authorities wasted no time in searching for the bear. On Thursday, October 2nd, a local resident reported seeing the sow and her cubs to authorities, and a helicopter was utilized to cover the territory and was productive in locating them. Investigators observed the sow along with her cubs and determined blood on her fur may be that of Robert Wagner. They shot and killed the sow and pulled DNA samples from her carcass to compare to samples from Robert's corpse and from the area in which it was found. 
Measurements from her teeth were taken to compare to Robert's wounds as an additional means of confirmation. After inspection of all the evidence regarding Robert's death, investigators concluded that they'd killed the bear that had attacked him. Now they needed to decide what to do with her cubs. While observing the cubs before her death, the investigators noted that the cubs were also aggressive toward humans and likely a threat to anyone they encountered. When the sow was shot by investigators, her three cubs had fled. Her cubs were described as large, so it is likely they weighed somewhere between 150 and 250 pounds, which is large enough to kill or injure any human being. Authorities decided to set out traps to try to round the cubs up, alive, so they could be transported to a zoo or rescue to avoid killing them. They may have learned through observation that attacking a human was acceptable, and this conclusion may have been arrived at by partial consumption of Robert's remains. I could find no source indicating any portion of Robert was consumed, but do not see any other rationale that would bring wildlife investigators to the conclusion that her cubs presented a danger to people. Residents around Calgary were polarized by Robert's fatal grizzly bear attack, and they formed two camps. Local ranchers, farmers, and residents expressed concerns about being attacked while they went about their day-to-day -day work. Ranchers and farmers had to check their fences before turning their livestock out, as well as rounding them up from grazing range, potentially placing them in close proximity to grizzlies in the area. Harvesting their crops and carrying out other outdoor work would expose them to the potential of stumbling into one of the unpredictable predators. Advocates for the preservation of grizzlies presented the case that grizzlies were rare and struggling as a species in the province. They were advocating that any effort to avoid killing the cubs be taken in the interest of preservation. With grizzly populations in Alberta reportedly coming in at around 500 bears, conservationists urged a more cautionary approach to handling problem bears. Robert's fatal grizzly bear attack was the fourth in a five-year span in Alberta and was a tragedy to his friends, family, and community. After reviewing the facts surrounding this episode, I'm left with a few questions for you. Do you think the cubs presented a danger to people whom they encountered in their territory? Was Robert's attack predatory, territorial, or defensive in nature? Should government officials, who are aware of environmental stressors on bears, be more involved in educating the public about the potential risks? I will enjoy reading and replying to your thoughts, so please post them in the comments section below, and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.